Dear former teacher, Thomas Wittenbeck, late January 15, 23. I am writing to you about the issue of Eucharistic real presence of Christ. For the first time, I express my rejection to the doctrine of transvestantiation of the body and blood of Christ to real body and blood. No Christians doubt that one eats the body and blood of Christ during the supper. However, a metabolic real presence is not demanded. We feed on Christ through the Word, the Spirit, the presence of faith. Christians fed by Christ Himself in the supper as food for the soul. This teaching goes back not merely to Erasmus, but to the Augustinian tradition of the mystical true presence. I am writing to you, my dear brother, after I faced my first public disputation earlier this month. When I began a question, when I began to question several worship practices, such as penance, indulgences, fasting, liberation of the saints, lyrical celibacy, and pilgrims. So I wrote my 67 articles. The eighth article was about the Mass. I said that Christ having sacrificed himself once is to eternity a certain and valid sacrifice for the sins of all faithful. Wherefrom it follows that the Mass is not a sacrifice, but is a remembrance of sacrifice and assurance of salvation which Christ has given us. Do not be confused. I believe in a non-metabolic presence of Christ. I spend a good deal of my letter to Matthew Albert, November 16, 1524, on John 6, and how the flesh profits nothing but faith in Christ counts for everything. To underline my belief in mystical true presence. Also, I supported my argument from both Tertullian and Augustine, both of whom stand in an ancient non metabolic tradition. In August 1525, in my work, Subsidiary Essay on Eucharist, I explained the issue of allegory, grammar, vocabulary in the original language, Greek and Hebrew writings. A figure in a dream was chasing me for being a slacker and pointed me to text in Exodus 12, the Passover. In 1526, I offer clearer teaching on the Lord's Supper called Clear Teaching on the Lord's Supper. I attested to the scripture against Rome, Erasmus, and Luther. The correct understanding of the Sabbath must be based on scripture. I developed an argument against Luther, against Luther's metabolic understanding of the Sabbath in a Merberg Colloquy. 1529 and three points. First, scripture offers evidence about allegorical language, including the parallels that we have seen between Exodus 12 and the Lord's Supper. Second, the exegesis of John 6, particularly but not exclusively, John 6, 63, along with the attendant concept of faith. Thirdly, Jesus is present spiritually but not in a human body. 
then when I ask it about my confession of faith in the Diet of Exburg 1530, I said that faith I have never I have never denied that Christ Christ's body is present in the super sacramentally and mystical mystically both because of the eye of faith and as I said the whole action of symbol since therefore this presence would be nothing without the eye of faith it is through faith that the things are present or become present and not through the sacraments I will continuously defend my belief in mystical true presence to which I believe that scripture attested as did the patriotic thinkers especially Augustine on baptism I adapted the general definition that sacrament is a visible sign for an invisible grace but I distinguish between the sacramental sign and the things signified and allow no necessarily or internal connection between them the baptism by water may take place without the baptism of the spirit in the case of Ananias and Simon Magus and the baptism by the spirit or regeneration without the baptism of water for the apostles received only John's baptism the penitent thief was not baptized at all and Cornelius was baptized after recognition on the infant baptism I strongly defended against the Anabaptists who believed only in adult baptism not that it is indeed important for salvation but it is proper to be practiced God's promise extended to children parents are privileged to bring up their children on the same faith I am the first to say that children dying in infancy are saved regardless of water baptism this is important because the death rate among the children is very high based on Christ atonement all the children are saved whether baptized or not Christian or not